What's up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh1 and we're back at it again answering your questions in another episode of For the Greater yeah. And today's episode, we are going over the question that you see above but for those people that don't know what this is, is a question and answer a video series that we put out on the Warhammer lore or pretty much anything about Warhammer, life um, ask us a question today, we'll answer it in a week and this question was left off by my name is Crispy. He asked, "Do you think any of the main races will team up to form an allegiance?" So the big thing going on right now in Warhammer 40K is, of course, the Gathering Storm, uh, the return of the Primarch. So yeah, the Primarch has returned. Why has he returned? In Ed. Yeah. A god is being born, a god of death, and reincarnation right. and shit, but we're going to ignore that completely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but who was who is going to team up now with Gilliman? Because Gilliman is really the um, leader of the Imperium. Um, and I think it's going to be the Tau. Why the Tau, you ask? Well, because Tyranids, there's no way of anybody teaming up with them. The Necrons... They've got their own stuff. They're always gonna fight. Um, they want to make the universe theirs. Chaos, obviously, out of the question. Eldar, they're already kind of teaming up with the Eldar. So the next logical one would be the orcs. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's the Tau. Why? Because the greater good could be anything, really. Um, all Gilliman has to say is the greater good is, you know, what I follow, and they'll be like, oh yeah, of course. So. Well, I don't think Gilliman's going to 100% become part of the greater good or anything, but no. I do think that um, the Tau, or Gilliman, Gilliman is going to find himself in a position where he's going to need help. And that help is going to come from these, basically, blanks. Um, people who do not um, register in the warp at all, and they're going to be able to defeat Gilliman's, I think, main enemy, which is Chaos, with right. Abaddon and his uh, 13th Black Crusade or whatever. Um, or, well... Abaddon, basically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that big threat, and then it Ned uh, ultimately. So I do think that the Tau and the Imperium are gonna f see some type of allegiance, and it's a good way for GW to pull in uh, Tau players into the story. Because at the end of the day, you want the Gathering Storm to be a little bit for everybody. Right. So far, we've seen it for um, Necrons, Imperium, Chaos, Eldar, Eldar. Dark Eldar, Harlequins. Um, Admech. Um, yeah, this Katari. Mm -hmm. All we need now is um, Tyranids, Orcs, and Tau. And that's a perfect way to tie in the Tau. Right. Now, even though the Necrons don't have any models, per se, they were included in the storyline. So. Crazy. Infinite. That's right. And his uh, Pokeballs of Doom. <laughs> Great question. If you guys want, um, if you guys want to have any, or do you guys, if you guys have anything to say about us saying that the Imperium and Tau are going to join together, please do so in the comments below. So let's go to more questions. This next one is by Keith Parrish. He asks, are there any kind or good gods of chaos or other gods? Well, Keith Parrish. Parrish? Parrish. Let me tell you something. No. <laughs> uh, the only god I can think of as being good is Isha. Now she is an Eldar god and she is the god of like fertility, god of cures, god of like wellness so to speak and the thing is Nurgle has her in her possession so Nurgle creates these foul viruses and pestilences and anything that's nasty really and he inflects her with her on her basically but she, since she's a god she's like oh I'm gonna heal myself and then Nurgle's like oh you know this thing made her bleed out of her eyes I'm gonna spread it into the universe but while he's spreading in the universe Isha's whispering the cure to, you know, Eldar and other people. So that it's like a it's like a constant battle between Nurgle and Isha. Yeah, so you can consider her a chaos god or a warp god and good. Next question comes from Roar Jody. If and when we successfully create AI after they dis decide to destroy us all, and after we've been completely destroyed, which race do you think the new AI would choose to play in Warhammer 40k. Necrons. Yeah, Necrons would be the most logical one. They're the most similar, and I feel like you probably assimilate easier to their technology. 
Or you could take it a completely different way and say that the AI are going to want to play Imperium because they're going to miss it. Mm -hmm. Oh. And these are all suggestions. Damn, guys. This question comes from Roger Rangel. If the warp, if it, if the warp like, is the warp like space, if a chicken went into warp, would it explode? If a chicken went into the warp, it would not explode. It is not like space. If a chicken went into the warp, it would be consumed by um, the Colonel Sanders. Oh. Colonel Sanders is a demon. He is a demon. He took he took his secret to the grave, but you didn't know that. That's why pa that's why KFC doesn't taste as good as back when he was alive. That's truth, man. That's the truth, truth. Jason Monroe. I recently started playing Imperial Guard, and I want to play Blob Infantry. What are absolutely necessary for a Blob? Lots and lots of lots of infantry. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to play competitively if Probably you want to do um, a blob. I know it works for the orcs because orcs are pretty good in close combat. They have something that they excel in. Imperial Guard don't really have anything specific that they ex excel in. Um, Besides tanks. <laughs> yeah, and you don't want tanks because you want a blob. Right. So just get your, you know, your, what is it called? Uh, mortars and your... Um, like the last can teams yeah. and all that. Yeah, do, do it that way. Get some get some walkers in there. But even then, like I'm telling you, I don't think that's going to be competitive. Like, because even if you get into close combat, you're not going to be killing a lot, and a lot of your guys are going to like die quickly. So over, it's basically like a, a tar pit unit. So think about it. Take a second. Bing. <laughs> Roger Rangel says. Nope, my bad. John Redcorn says, Which is the best hip-hop comedy movie in the 2000s? How High or Malibu's Most Wanted? <laughs> I remember Malibu's Most Wanted. I remember that too. I don't remember How High that much. How High is with uh, Dave Chappelle, isn't it? Honestly, I've never seen that one, so I'm not sure. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with... Um, Malibu's? Yeah, because that's the one that I remember the most. Yeah, that's the only one I've seen, so by default, it's Malibu. Good question. Next question. This one's by Inquisitor Fuck Lord No. Can I have a good question? What would happen if a Warhammer 40k character came to our 2017 world? Which one? He says we can pick. Hmm. It would be really cool to see an alien come into the war or into like today's time, uh, especially an orc. That would be pretty badass. We would. It it, it wouldn't be able to hide. It would just <laughs> attack. But what's cool is like. Of course, we would have to kill it. The police officer would like psh, 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 psh. And make that noise too. Yeah, psh, 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 psh. and then it dies, releases spores, and this is gonna happen right next to Yellowstone Yellowstone National Park, right? So the park ranger killed the orc because the orc appeared. Doesn't matter what orc, because whatever. Spores get released into Yellowstone National Park. Five months later. There's a mini wog of savage orcs coming out and attacking uh, just civilians because of course that's what's around mm -hmm. the national park. And so begins the plague of the greenskins. Now in my opinion that's pretty cool because if you got green skin, well first of all, I doubt a pistol is going to be able to kill an orc because they got like tough hide and all that. That's true. So they probably kill the uh, ranger and then somebody will find his body and then Snowballs, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, the introduction of this alien race, especially one so vicious and focused on war like the orcs, is going to really help unite the human race. Because now it's not going to be like, oh, let's fight the Asians or let's fight the Mexicans. Mexicans. It's like, oh, we got to combine and attack the aliens. Not the illegal ones, the orc ones. And then Donald Trump's gonna show up. And he's gonna want to build a wall around Yellowstone, <laughs> Yellowstone National Park. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a mini gas school is gonna tear down that wall. Yep. And he's gonna be like, "Wah!" It's like our walls are better than your walls. <laughs> yep. That would be really cool, though. Hey, somebody write it up. Fan fiction time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do it. Um. Next question. Comes from Dragon Punch 903 again. Whoa. Is it my turn? Yeah, right? Yeah. Is it possible to travel in the warp back in time as to when you were never born and thus make it so that you were never born? 
you can't control that. No, because the warp just spits you out whenever, wherever. Mm -hmm. So you might appear when your daddy was there. Not there. Maybe you become your own dad. It's gross. <laughs> uh, but the cool thing about like that whole idea is that the warp doesn't spit you out in the same place. So like, let's say currently there was a warp gate behind us. Hypothetically speaking, not that there actually is or anything, but we would enter that warp gate and come out maybe in the past, but it wouldn't be the past on Earth. It would be the past anywhere in the galaxy. That's right. So the, the chances of you going back in time and being in the same place that you were when you left, pretty, pretty slim. But it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. This next one isn't a question, but it's just something I like saying out loud. Yo, Gersh is looking good. Thanks, man. <laughs> What's looking good? I think we all know. Zigit, does does Imperium maintain secondary, middle school, or universities, or is it just primary school? Few years pass, and boom, you are an Imperial Guardsman. Depends on the planet. Uh, most planets, especially Forge Worlds, don't even have the concept of school for people who are in the middle and lower hive. Um, Death Corp, or the Krieg, Krieg the planet, um, there is no school. It's just right off the bat, you start getting trained to, to fight. Mo most guardsmen of the Death Corps of Krieg um, don't even know how to read and write. They can interpret like signs and whatnot, but yeah. Next question. This one is by Wubstep Denim. What is the best army to start off with? I'm just getting into model building and I want to make a massive army for cheap and that's still good. Space Marines? Yes, definitely. Yeah, because uh, there's tons of Space Marines on eBay, so you can get the models super cheap and pretty quick. Um, Sometimes you could find them already built, already painted, so it's like, boom, spend 300 bucks, already got a playable army. Yep. And since Space Marines are pretty much like the top of the, you know, top of the food chain, so to speak, they're a pretty good army if you know who you're battling and if you know what to give them competitively. So, Space Marines would be the best option. Yep, I would agree. Shark Wolf Connor. How do I get my girlfriend to play Warhammer 40k with me? Play naked. Have her uh, squigga get invaded by your thousand sons. That's semen. Why, <laughs> why, why is it green? Uh, Nurgle. That's sick. <laughs> um, do you have any advice for real advice? Uh... I say get her into the lore of it because if you just like oh look at this guy this guy's gonna fight yeah what's cool about the hobby is it has many different levels so if she likes painting bam, bam. If she likes lore bam. bam if she likes actually playing the game but bam, bam. bam when you're done playing bam during playing bam that's why you gotta play naked mm -hmm. uh this one's by freak style 95 bam can you do 40 facts on the different chapters of the Vulture Bitches, like our Martyr Lady, Blood Rose, etc. And thanks for the pickup lines. So basically he was asking for 40 facts on the Sisters of Battle. Sure, we'll do that. Yeah, it'll come. Once a month. Okay. Eric Crom, would you mind doing lore for another uh, franchise, or just more in-depth lore of the planets and like the bio biomes? Uh, flora fauna, uh, love videos, keep up, keep up, and greetings from the Netherlands. Dang, we got a Netherlands watcher. That's pretty awesome. For the All Father Battle Brothers, Eric Wolflord Crumb. Yes, like the Wolflord. Um, yeah, we can or franchises. So, fantasy is in the works, and by in the works, I mean sometime this week. We're gonna put out. I'm gonna put out a fantasy video. And he's putting out, guys. I'm putting out. <laughs> uh, and then if anything, Game of Thrones is really, it really interests me. I think it interests a lot of people. Now, on the topic of Game of Thrones real quick, did you guys wait for an hour watching that ice melt so we can get the, <laughs> the date of when the show is gonna be starting again? 
I just waited until the next day to watch the trailer. Yeah, same here. <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, there's a lot of people that watch it. Maybe it'll be done in like five minutes. No. <laughs> What's next? Watching paint dry <laughs> to find out what happens? Yep. All right, this one's by Chosen of Horus. Gersh won. Who won the Start Collecting Space Marines from the Angry Marines Part 2 video? I have not seen or heard of a winner, so still waiting on who won the Start Collecting box. So we had a winner. I forget his name. Um, but that was back when we did the whole... Um, like, we didn't have this area to film in, so we filmed at yeah. your house. And um, that I accidentally deleted that uh, video. And we weren't going to get together. We only get together once a week. So we weren't going to get together until the end of the week. So instead of waiting, I just contacted the guy and we set it up. So yeah. there's going to be giveaways this week, though. Yeah, so stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned for that guy. Because of another mess up that happened with... Well, I'll tell you. Well, so I'm probably not going to tell you guys in the giveaway. So I'll just tell you now. <laughs> there's a company in Poland who contacted us and they were like, we, we create... I forget their names. And I'm gonna mispronounce it, so I'm not even gonna try. But they send us they send us some stuff. It's miniatures pertaining to Warhammer 40k. They're like um, replacement parts, like heads of orbs right. and stuff like that. Yeah, think of um, like uh, con conversion parts, so to speak. Yeah, and then they were like, you know, can you display this stuff? And we're gonna give you guys stuff to give away. And we're like, that's awesome. Thanks. Uh, so they sent it to our PO box, but the box was too big. So the, the post office gave us a pink slip. It, it was a week like it took me a week to actually go to the post office and get it because the day that I went to go pick it up I went to the post office there's 10 people in line and one lady in the front counter and the post office so it's basically like a DMV type of situation um, and I was just like you know I can't wait I'm like my Saturday's gonna die so I left um, uh, and then didn't have enough time until next Saturday got there same lady took forever I waited in line for like 20 minutes and it's actually funny because I was waiting in line and there's two older people in front of me and they were talking about um, uh, shipping model trains so I actually <laughs> I found out um, that there's a hobby store in downtown that way downtown Yorkville no uh, Swigo okay uh, so but anyways I finally got to there and the lady was like sorry we shipped it back so the <laughs> box got shipped back did I, did I tell you no, I'm finding okay. this out for the first time. <laughs> yeah, so we were supposed to, we had a whole giveaway set up, we had a bunch of stuff, but because of that mess up, uh, we, I don't know what's going to happen. So, we're going to give you guys giveaways, but just regular Warhammer 40k giveaways. Yeah, if they ship it to us back, uh, it's going to take a while since it is Poland, mm -hmm. but uh, just be patient, there will be giveaways in between. I'm going to try my best not to mess these things up anymore. Kent Madox. Madox. First off, you guys brought me back to 40k. Keep it up. Thanks, man. Um, and we will. And that, that's awesome. That sounds awesome. If Lehman Russ comes back, do you think he'll bring the 13th company back with him? The 13th Rocks. Uh, no, I think the 13th uh, already came back, didn't it? Yeah, it's like the, uh, the, 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 the wolf, 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 wolf in there. You go. Yeah. Next question. Uh, more pickup lines for 40k. Are you a high fleet? Because I got some biomass for you. Mm. You have to, <laughs> you have to date me. Order off the commissar. I don't care if you're on your period. Call me a bloodthirsty. Damn, that's gross. <laughs> that's, that's all I got. <laughs> uh, this question comes from Martin Knight. This is gonna be a long one. Oh, maybe I shouldn't read it. <laughs> As we know, orcs, gear, and machines. Um, get special effects depending on the color. For example, red machines go faster, etc. Okay, then let's for a brief moment imagine that the orcs are fighting. Oh, we already answered. Or we've already talked about this. So you're basically saying, do the blood angels move faster because the orc be orcs believe that they move faster? No, it doesn't work that way. No, it only affects orc uh... technology. Yeah. Next question. Red Emperor five nine one. Who's more powerful, Gork or Mork? The boss wants to know. Gork. More. Here you go. And then we fight. That, that's, that's, that's how I fight. We fight like this. Right. Whew. D fool. 
zero six. He has two questions. Oh, would there be a possibility a possibility that the returning lo loyalist Primarch would ever fall into chaos? If yes, which Primarch? If any loyalist Primarch would fall into chaos, it would have to be Gilliman. Oh, no. that's not what I was going with. <laughs> okay. He's Why the only he's the only one that could fall into chaos now because he's the only one that's actually in the story right now. I was gonna say the lion. Ooh, maybe he's a dark uh, or a fallen angel. Yeah. No, but uh, the only way I could see Gilliman turning to chaos would be if like the High Lords brand him as a traitor. Like, oh, this guy is gaining too much power. He's you know, he's belittling our technology. He wants us to progress and forget about the ways of the Emperor. Heretic. Yes. With GW releasing new lore now, do you think more loyalist Primarchs would ever die? Like, truly die? Dead and never returning again ever? That's actually a really good question because that's something that I've been thinking about. Um, Gilliman is returning. How long is he going to stay with the Imperium? Is, it, is this going to be a situation where Gilliman becomes a part of Warhammer 40k for the rest of Warhammer 40k? Like, moving forward? Or... At some point, are they going to kill him off because he is like a special character and they want to get rid of him? Um, and I really hope the answer is that Gilliman stays with the Warhammer 40k forever. Um, to have a Primarch come back just to see him leave, I don't know, it, just, it's, it sucks. Yeah, I, I know what you're feeling, but I feel like story-wise, if you do get rid of Gilliman, that kind of leaves the opening for somebody else to take his place. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, those were the questions for this week, guys. Thank you so much for sending those questions our way. We have more question and answer videos coming, so subscribe to the channel. But most viewers who watch this usually are, you know, subscribers. So thanks again for that. Don't forget to leave more questions. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Head on over to our Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and Instagram pages for more epic 40k content. That's all we got. As always, he is Gersh One, Sound Alchemist, and we are out of here.